It's very, very simple to get what you want, but it's not easy. It's your job to make yourself do the crap you don't want to do so you can be everything that you're supposed to be. And you're so damn busy waiting to feel like it. And you're never going to. Ever. And your problem is you're not intentional and deliberate. You wake up on Monday and you might be strong, but by Wednesday, are you hearing what I'm telling you? You're not intentional and deliberate. You are hoping that the best is going to happen to you and the best never happens to you. You got to be intentional and deliberate, whether you're making money or not making money. You got to decide that you're going to do something and you got to do it every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday. The problem with some of you in this room, you're not intentional and deliberate. You're a good person that just hopes the good stuff is going to happen to you. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how minuscule the movement is, but make movement. Move forward and do that every single day, no matter what. When you walk this journey, you must know that it's going to go down before it comes up. And when it comes up, it's going to go so much higher than you've ever been. Sacrificing today for tomorrow's betterment. But if you didn't know that, you didn't prepare for that, you think something's wrong, maybe it's time to stop. No, it's time to move for you further. Whatever challenges or discomfort you experience, you got that hand. What do you want me to tell you? That it's going to be a picnic? No, it's not. Will it be challenging? Yes. It's going to kick your butt? Yes, it is. This dream you got, whatever you want to do, will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. Will you have some opposition? Will things go wrong sometimes? You will have many visits, Murphy. Are you going to want to die? Yes, yes, that's a part of it. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. You're strong enough. And your life is worth whatever you have to go through. you want a great jump in the quality of your life, an extraordinary jump in the quality of your life, you got to set yourself up. You got to set yourself up with a process that allows you to consistently grow, consistently enjoy your life, and consistently produce the results that you're really after. And I don't care what area of life you want to change, coaching is one of the most valuable tools in the world. Now, when I started my career, there was no coaching industry. I helped to father that interesting industry almost 35 years ago. And it's kind of interesting, when I first started out, if somebody would have said, oh, one of the best ways you can help an executive perform at a higher level is get him a personal coach, I mean, people would have laughed at you. But today, it's a multi-billion dollar industry because 70% of the Fortune 500 now say, in a recent study, if you want to find the top three ways to improve performance of an executive, one of those is personal coaching. But again, when I began, you know, I'll tell you kind of the history of how this came about. I was a young man who was always looking for answers. I wanted to change my own life initially, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially, but as soon as I got answers, I always was coaching other people. When I was, you know, in high school, I was Mr. Solution. If you had a problem, I had the solution. Especially if you were a girl, because then I was more motivated and I want to really help. You know? But really at that time, I would feed my mind. I didn't have a lot of coaches to come after. I fed my mind with books. I read a book a day. My goal is read a book every single day that's about personal development, improvement, psychology, physiology, something that could help you improve your life. And when people needed help, I had the answer. And I got hooked on having those answers. So I kind of started that coaching at that stage where I coached myself and people saw results. And those results made people ask me what to do and that's how I got involved in it. You have to teach your mind to honor the struggle. You have to teach your mind. Every day you're getting discouraged. And instead of saying, well, I guess I quit. I suck. This is no good. It's never going to happen. You have to take control of the self-talk and honor the struggle. Like literally tell your mind how to deal with the process. Tell your mind, no, no, no. This process, this hardship, this struggle, it's part of conditioning me 
to be ready for the dream, to succeed. This part of the struggle that I hate right now, it's developing character, it's making me force it, it's helping me challenge, it's making me grow. In other words, anticipate the fire, anticipate the difficulty, anticipate that it's going to suck, anticipate the days that you just don't like it. 2008 in particular was, 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 was awful because uh, we had the third launch failure in a row of, of our Falcon 1 vehicle, SpaceX. Um, and um, we uh, the test plans and the group raising fell apart because uh, the economy was going to tail spin. Um, it was pretty hard to raise money for the startup car company. Uh, you know, late 2008 when GM and Chrysler are busy going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. um, that that was it was tough and then Silver City had to move to Sydney and move to Sydney to renege on the deal because they themselves were running out of money. I was also going through a divorce. So, I was definitely a little bit... So, it's 2008, you're going through a divorce, which like some, to borrow your word, douchebag bloggers are writing about to make even worse. Right, uh, yes, that's true. Um, in addition to all this stuff happening, I was getting dumped on massively in the press. Right. Yeah. You're, you know, it looks like all three companies <laughs> yeah. are going to get fail. I mean, why do you keep going with all three? Like, I feel like even a lot of great entrepreneurs right. in that situation would have been like, I, I've already sunk everything I have in these companies, and I got to pick one. But you didn't. I mean, you kept doing all three. Why? Um, yeah, that was a, that was a very tough call. At, at the end of 2008, that was that was probably the tough, you know, one of the toughest calls I've had to make um, because I could either um, reserve capital for one company. Or the other. I mean, fortunately, Solar City didn't need a ton of capital, so they were, they were okay. Um, but between SpaceX and, and, and Tesla, um, you know, it's sort of like like you've got two kids, and what do you do? Do you spend all your money to, to, to maximize the quality of success of, of one, or do you, do you try to keep both lap? Okay. Fortunately, it worked. How do you make your decisions? You're, you're changing the world every day. I mean, if, you, if it's nothing but the children you have, I mean, you, you know, you are forming their view of the world and every and you do it every day. So you, you are a teacher, but with the people around you, one of the best things in life to do is to surround yourself with high grade people because you will behave as the people around you do. But they in turn are getting it from you. It's kind of like a planetary system. And and you will. I, I promise you, 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 know, you will change the world in some way. And, and my guess is you'll change it. But you can't expect to see something dramatic. I mean, it's not, it's not one of those Shazam move, you know, <laughs> moments or something of the sort. But you, you by how you're behaving, are are affecting other people, setting an example for other people. And you, you will find ways to, to, to leave a better world than you entered. One of the biggest mistakes we make is we don't study the stories of the greats. So how many people's lives? Have you studied from start to finish? Yeah. If you've studied someone's life from start to finish, I genuinely believe this is like the core skill that's needed. I would say that the people I admire, I have studied their lives from start to finish. I know why they made bad decisions, what they consider to be good decisions. Like there's autobiographies and biographies out there. There's podcasts like ours where people come and listen to people's stories. If you've not studied someone's story, then you can't follow that path because every time yeah. you hit a rejection, so every time I get rejected, I think of Steve Jobs getting kicked out of his own company. Crazy, isn't every it? Every time I fail, I think about Michael Jordan losing a game. Every time I get tired of training, I think about Cristiano Ronaldo putting in that extra rep. Those are the visual cues that we need, but you only get those visual cues if you've done the research mm. and the study. And then you go, oh, if Steve Jobs was kicked out of his own company, but then still had the audacity at one point to go and build Pixar, then I think I'm all right if I just jo didn't get this job. Within a year of going public, I think, uh, there's some fortune cover that says the deal that made Bill Gates 360 million or some weird thing like that. All right, how did it change your life or it didn't change your life at all? Well, that whole period of time was amazing because I was hiring people as fast as I could. I brought in Steve Ballmer, who was very good at that, and, and he was helping out. You know, we had a sense of urgency that we wanted to lead the way. There was this graphics interface thing with Windows that we wanted to do. So I was super busy. And the idea that I could 
hire so quickly and invest and build this worldwide company uh, was fascinating to me, but I was really busy. So, you know, if some friend had tried to call me, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have had too much time for that. I was really into building this company and I was going out and telling people about the magic of software, which was good for Microsoft, but also helping them understand the opportunities and the huge change agent that software and eventually software plus the internet would would become. So I was having fun, it was amazing, but I always thought, hey, you know, we're one step away from not, you know, leading here. We gotta gotta keep doing better.